9,120 pounds. This is J Flight 34 RSBS here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Um, this is kind of what I refer to as a flat deck fifth wheel floor plan, where you'll see fifth wheels like this all over the place, like an Eagle 321, a North Point 315, a Montana, uh, let's see, 3120 or 3121, etc. It's got door side super slide loaded with windows. You've got an off door side kitchen slide and entertainment slide, direct facing entertainment, and a big full bedroom slide. Uh, these things are excellent for park use. Uh, you know, you, I mean, can you tow them? Yes, of course, but something this long, usually people are looking at this like an alternative to a park or destination trailer. And I think big campers like this are part of the reason that that destination trailer uh, market segment has really dwindled in the past because, you know, you can get a camper that's like eight foot tall inside and it feels nice, but it doesn't do anything more than this one does really at the end of the day. If you're a regular Halet RV watcher, then you already know that most of the time when the slide outs are closed, as they are currently, and you have opposing slides, and you have an island or a peninsula, as it is in this case, you're uh, not really going to get through the living room a whole heck of a lot. Uh, these are usually used for more destination use, however, so that's not nearly the problem that it appears to be, because most of the time this thing's going to sit somewhere wide open. Um, these big triple slide trailers are often used more for like park use actually so travel access while nice is not really as much of a necessity here although you do have easy access to the uh, bathroom for quick stops and you can still maintain use of the bed when the slide out is closed but it's really when this one opens up that you kind of go oh wow this is a this is a lot of trailer for the money now it, it is uh, very much, uh, you know, a, uh, a family member to something like the 330 RSTS Eagle, which is an extremely popular big triple slide trailer like this. But this is one that comes in at a significantly lower price point while still hitting all the major notes. And we're going to kind of hit on that as we go. Now, remember that the one that we have in stock might be or uh, equipped or look a little different than this. Now, this is a new Sterling decor, kind of a, a more gray tone interior. I think this is an absolute knockout stunner. I would love some feedback though, guys. Here's what I'd like to know. Do you like the gray? Do you not like the gray? Would you prefer brown? Because that's the other option. Now, here's the other thing I'm really curious about. Do you like the gray or the brown in a couple's coach or a bunkhouse? Because I think that this is, it, it has a lighter feel, but it's still a little bit of a neutral mid-tone darker skin. I don't know what you want to call it, but I think that this still looks great even in bunkhouses. I would love some feedback on that. Please leave us some comments there. So, J Flight's here. One of the things that has made them the single best selling RV, not just travel trailer, but the single best selling RV since 2005 and counting, <laughs> wow, is the fact, uh, one of these things, is that they're taller inside. Now, a lot of other brands have since adopted J Flight's six foot nine interior, but most, uh, the, the majority of the market still has six and a half foot walls. Um, so this is one of those extra little things, especially in a big camper like this, it's probably just going to be left at a destination for destination purposes. It gives you that extra interior space feel and comfort, where if you're going to be in it for a long time, like if you seasonal snowbird in Florida, or if you just have it at a lake, you're going to like the bigger open feel. Now, taller ceiling opens up the opportunity for bigger slides, bigger windows, more storage, taller showers, etc. There's a lot of things that go into it. So we have an easy, no neck wrecker entertainment center here with a TV that is directly across from that uh, wall hugging theater recliner. Now remember that some of the furniture you're looking at here is optional, but this is probably how we're gonna be breaking them in. This is how our customers have kind of said we like to see these. And you are not hurting for entertainment. There's better entertainment, bigger TV on this and higher grade than you find in a lot of big fifth wheels out there, guys. So we've got our big Furion TV here. We're gonna see how that thing actually swings out for easier viewing later. Um, over here, we've got our IRV stereo system. This is something uh, Rockwood had been kind of using for a while, and a lot of other brands in the more premium categories like your Jayco's have jumped onto. And what I like about them is the, uh, well, I forgot to peel that off. I, I, I got a thing about this. I don't like seeing that ugly, bubbly plastic on there. Anyway, um, it has a face-mounted uh, HDMI port with a USB charging plug, so those little Chromecast streaming sticks, it is very friendly for those kind of things. Now, I, I, uh, I actually, I'm kind of kicking myself looking at it. I realized that when I was shooting my photos, 
I forgot to turn on that little accent light under that rear trifold sleeper sofa back there. And it does a couple things for you. One, during the day, it just looks neat. But at night, it does give a nice little underglow where when the kiddos are sleeping on that trifold sleeper sofa over there, um, it won't, like bother them. It's not a direct in your face light, but if they have to get up and walk, it'll kind of cascade light around the floor and you can see. Now, speaking of bonus sleeping, let's start with that trifold sofa. So it folds out and obviously you can sleep, uh, you know, two adults or even a couple kids there. And you do still maintain sleeping uh, capacity on that uh, one of the theater seats that fully reclines. And of course, the dinette can fold down as well. Now, that dining table is also very multi-purpose. On that free-floating elliptical base, one of the things I like about it is that uh, if I, like, I'm kind of a little bit too big in the midsection, I need to address that, but I've said that for years and I have it, so I don't think that's going to change because I don't think it actually bothers me enough. I, I'm pretty sure if we're all being honest with ourselves, there's more than one person that feels like I do. I'd like to get a little healthier, but I'm not willing to. Anyway... I can shift the table. That was my point to that whole tangent that I went on there, is that I can shift the table side to side. I can also move the table in front of the theater seat and have a little, like, evening movie night uh, serving station. Or I can fold it down and I can use it like a coffee table in front of the sofa when the guests are over. Um, I mean, you could fold it down and you could take it outside for picnic time. The uses of it are many and varied. Now, you can see the we do have nice little side stands on both sides of the sofa, too. No little detail was missed. They didn't cut corners on this. This is less expensive than an Eagle, but this is one of the most expensive things in its class and category if you start comparing it, because it does have more equipment. But the equipment it has are the things that I think a lot of people are looking for, like all of the windows opening for ventilation. And how about the fact that all the windows are also fully trimmed out. It looks awesome, guys, but it also gives the pleated nightshades here something to really bite into. And I've noticed we don't have pleated nightshade problems. It's, it's one of these things we take care of before people take them home because we don't charge extra dealer fees at Halet RV, and that includes quality inspecting RVs. Well, a lot of RVs, when they first come in, these shades just blop. They're not hung properly. Do we have to rehang them? That is just not a problem on Jayco since they started trimming out their windows. And by the way, there are power outlets um, on each side of the sofa as well. And that's that switch up there is for the little accent light below. Now, cabinetry, one of the things I've always liked about this, and this is true even in J-Flight SLX models, the, the entry base series, the overhead doors are always strutted so that they're they're self-supporting. They're easier to get to. Now, when you're shopping, guys, reach around the back and try to feel behind the cabinet style right here. On a J-Flight, you're going to feel uh, what's called lumber core. So it's got a real wood core with just a, uh, a cosmetic wrap on the front and then pocket screwed together. And that is the type of cabinet construction you get all the way through like North Point, Montana uh, fifth wheels. You have to go into a Pinnacle or a Montana Legacy to start getting hardwood stuff. Now your uh, theater seat over here, little detail thing, but that middle armrest does have a little um, remote control holder in there. And here's another thing. Not only do we have sofa side breeze windows, we have slide side breeze windows, and you are loaded with windows on the door side of the RV, which is one of the most trending things right now. I, I I don't know. I am so old for my age. I guess I'm technically a millennial. I didn't realize that until millennials were like almost 35 years old, apparently, but I guess I technically am. I don't, I, I never, I never adopted the whole phrasing, like the trending thing. Okay. doesn't matter. Here's an optional piece of equipment. We will put on these things 10 times out of 10. A 15,000 BTU air conditioner, but it's something that you can't see. It's a hard thing for people to be able to see here. Now there, again, there are different ways you can build this camper. Standard, it has a single 13.5 air. You can upgrade to a 15K air. You can upgrade to 50 amp service with second AC prep, or you can upgrade all the way up to two air conditioners with or without the 15,000 BTU air here. The bedroom AC will be a 13.5 if I'm not mistaken. If that's not correct, I'll try to leave a little blurb at the bottom of the screen when I pr do my little production points. So again, the one we have in stock could be different. Skylight up here is another option, but especially above this kitchen, it just adds all that nice glowing natural light. But if it is hotter in downtown hell, you can just close this shade right here and it's not going to offend anybody. But speaking of hot, you can control where the heat is and is not a little bit better in a Jayco with vented and louvered, meaning directional and, and closable AC vents. Um, the uh, Let me back up here because if you glance, like right now, the kitchen does not seem terribly impressive. But is there more than meets the eye? 
And yes, there is. <laughs> Now this model has been a staple of the Halid RV lineup for many seasons now because it fills a lot of really good roles. It gives you that big full-size camper, the big triple slide, the bedroom slide, the front closet, but it does it at a more affordable price point and budget range. So that's, that's its really primary purpose here. But there's a lot of things that are still misunderstood. Like when people come to look at this one here at Halid RV, they often look at what we are looking at right now and they go, Mm, yeah, I know that it's less money than something like the Eagle, but it sure does have a lot smaller kitchen. You have to take a second and you have to start opening up cabinetry. Now, I've started doing that here. You can see how with the uh, six foot nine interior on these, we are able to shelf the upper cabinets to double the storage space there. Um, I do like that we've got the thermal foil countertops in these J flights now, that sealed edge type of countertop that is far more water resistant. And frankly, I think most people think cosmetically just looks better. And a real tile backsplash, not a wallpaper. So there's a lot of really good eye candy going on here, along with, and the way that it flows into the whole stainless appliance bundle and that eight cubic foot fridge over there, it's great. We've got this nice swing out, easy access counter pantry. And I've seen some people who just aren't interested in those carefully unscrew the piano hinge from the cabinetry right there. Don't rip it off. Be careful. And then put like a big wastebasket or something here. I've seen people do that too. When we're over here, you see that really all around the stove, they gave you all the storage space that they possibly can. We've got uh, a, a good dedicated wastebasket space below the sink. You probably won't need to take that pantry off. And drawers here where they could. Now, they couldn't make the drawers go up much higher because you would have interfered with the uh, the big sink that we have going on. And you've got the recessed uh, cover and the, the drying rack there. And by the way, I say it all the time, do the wedding ring test if you listen. That's not plastic. You can hear better materials. And all that's nice, but admittedly, it is fairly small and compact. But the good news, guys is that's not where the kitchen stops. That's where the kitchen starts. Over here, you've got uh, the RV Nerd Pantrytainment Center, where it, the TV basically is a door for a giant storage compartment behind with additional storage space on both sides. The TV swings out. Now, you can use that for viewing at the dinette if you're interested, but it, also, it has a couple benefits. Uh, obviously, we can use this for storage here, but you can also get to the hookups on the TV. So if you do want to expand your TV options with a satellite, a Blu-ray, some streaming-type sticks, it's very easy to access that. But you really need to look at the whole slide and kitchen bend as one organism because when you put it all away, it's not as uh, plainly obvious that this really does have a nice big kitchen. And I like the fact that it has a peninsula instead of an island. Not everybody is looking for an island, and a peninsula can give you more countertop prep space than an island can, and in fact, that is actually what's happening here. And I've always been a little bit of a sucker for that level exchange and the height exchange right now. I've just always liked the look of those. Now, just like we had accent lighting under the sofa, we have accent lighting under the countertop as well. Another one of those little night guidance lights, if you will. Pardon my uh, umbrella and jacket on the little coat hanger here when you walk in the door. Um, it is a little bit drizzly outside, and I do have to do some uh, footage with a camera in my hand later. Very simple, but nicely dressed and uh, sort of hidden uh, master control center here. And things like your water heater buttons, so that you don't, you know, have the grandkids burn up your water heater, like I did when I was a grandkid camping with my grandparents. <clears throat> They're up here so that the grandkids, like me, can't get to them. I apologize for my grandfather, or to my grandfather still every day. So we saw that we could easily get to the bathroom, but we didn't really take a good look at it. So over here, it's not a small uh, sink, it's a big countertop, because this actually has a good adult size sink that you can really get hands into. We've got, I love the double uh, shelf storage below, so like extra um, toilet paper, shampoos, toothpaste, whatever, although, I, you're going to be able to keep a lot of things up here because they actually use a bigger, deeper vanity on these than most brands. Cherokee is about the only brand I've seen with a bigger vanity. Now, up here is something that they, uh, you know, we'll just say borrowed <laughs> from their uh, sister cousin, whatever. Oh, I hope they're not sister cousins. Anyway, uh, their family member, the Jayco Eagle, and that is just a single little blue LED nightlight. And it's not terribly impressive during the day. But at night, it makes the whole bathroom glow, kind of like it's glowing around here a little bit, so that you can see what you're doing without turning on the lights and blinding yourself. Now, one of the things that's fantastic about these is that extra interior height. And case in point, it's really one of the main reasons why when I camp, I camp in a J-Flight. Because of this. Because I can stand in the shower. And this is something that I can't do 
in a lot of campers. It's one of the little barometer checks that I put through. It's actually one of the reasons they used to start uh, having me go and look at new campers before we started carrying them is, hey, can Josh fit in these things? It's nice, you know? Do I need this? No. You'll only spend a few minutes in the shower, but I like it. And if I'm going to spend this much money for a couple bucks more, I could get one that I could stand in the shower. And that was worth it to me. Is it worth it to you? I don't know. Everybody's a little bit different. Now, uh, over here, you can see we've got this huge closet array. But as we pan down, you can see that we've got all kinds of cabinet storage in this thing. It's just ridiculous the amount of storage capacity they were able to put in there. You will always, I've never had somebody trade in a camper because it had too much storage capacity. That's never going to happen. Obviously, we have an easy dual entry bathroom. You have a sliding privacy door from the bedroom. So again, if you do have guests, grandkids, whatever, nobody really loses any sort of privacy. Now, up here, this is something you don't often see in this class and category is a full bedroom slide in a wood skeleton travel trailer. Now, more and, the floor planes like this are becoming popular. And with this being a more um, price sensitive, but intelligently equipped version of it, it's very popular. So more and more brands are coming up with at least one of something like this. But I have noticed a lot of them are really missing the fine details. Jayco, with all the laminated stuff that they build, they were able to take notes from other members of the Jayco family when they built this J-Flight to make this a knockout bedroom. So first of all, not only do we have uh, windows on the bed sides, but this is a full deep bedroom slide. That's one of those things that's very easy to overlook. A lot of times when you get into a bedroom slide, people say, well, I just need the bed in a slide, but they don't really pay attention to how deep. It could be as little as 12 to 18 inches. This is a full 36 inch, full deep slide. And that means bigger windows over here, more light, more airflow. Now, both sides of the bed, you'll see, have these handy little stands with power outlets nearby. And those bedside power outlets for my CPAP users and phone charging friends, that is one of those details that a lot of, uh, quote, stick and tin manufacturers, as is the industry term, um, they miss because they're not familiar with what people need and want in a, in a class in a segment like this. Now, uh, this is a queen bed, but it's a full true residential length queen, 60 by 80 queen. It is, however, king capable. A lot of times in, in the real high dollar jobs like an eagle, they're, they're stunningly beautiful, but they're certainly a different price bracket than this. You, we will tend to put a king bed in them. Sometimes they're even standard because that's such an expectation. This being a little more price sensitive, it is a queen bed, but you do have the ability to upgrade to a king. What's kind of nice though, with the queen, you maintain greater walk around space here. Now, if we look up front, you see we've got that fully mirrored claws up there, that big wardrobe and all those big cabinet doors. If we open all of that up, you can see all of the storage in that big monster front closet. Now, what's kind of cool is um, in the main closet section, there's actually a full pass through that runs below those, uh, below that wardrobe. So you have outside storage in two different ways in the pass through and under the bed. And we're going to look at that later. Now, over here, if we have found so many people, we don't need to add TVs to campers anymore. Um, what we've really found, guys, is that if, like, you're like, I can see that it's prepped and it's ready for a TV. J-Flights now actually include a quick-release TV mount, um, which is really cool because you can kind of move the TV or t pull it down for storage if you want to. Whatever. You get the point. But what's, uh, so many people, they're like, well, I have extra TVs at home. I can put it up there. And especially when the mount's already included for you, that's, that's easy. You do not need to be able to, you don't even need to be able to operate a screwdriver. If you can use a butter knife, you could put a TV up on that thing. But let's say you don't want to. You know, let's say, hey, this is a recreational vehicle. I want fun. I want easy. I don't want to have to do anything. I want this thing to get out of the box and go. Fine, I respect that. Give our guys a call and say, does the one in stock have a TV in it? Okay, could you put one in it? And the reason I say that is we can go across the street to the big box store of your choice, get a TV. We can pay a tech to install it for less than we can get it from the factory nowadays, guys. There's just certain times where it doesn't make sense to add money into an optional TV anymore. Now, the dresser here is simple, but by not going overboard, it also makes everything in here nice and big. And by going with a deeper bedroom slide, you've also got more walk-around space in here. Kind of like the extra interior height, more space is a common thing in a J-Flight. So even though the weather is huh, kind of crappy, um, it's raining like crazy right now. We're all operating not under an umbrella. I've got wet feet, but hey, the show must go on. That's what happens when you want to sell RVs in the Midwest. You deal with all kinds of weather conditions. Um, it's really, it's kind of a perfect example day 
of when you're going to want a big unit like this. You know, if you are going to spend an extended time in an RV and you get a bad weather day, you're going to need the space where, you know, you and the family or you and the missus or whoever, you know, can be in this thing without being like, I'm going to kill you if you get near me again. You need that extra space, basically. The people beside me are laughing at me. I see you laughing at me over there. Anyway, so um, let's say it wasn't a cruddy day and you weren't locked inside. Or let's just say that you don't mind a little bit of that fresh spring summer rain and you like the fresh air that it brings. Well, you've got yourself a pretty healthy power awning on this thing. And what's also kind of smart is they've moved the outside speakers out of the sidewall. So there's no longer these big four inch holes in the wall that they have to drill out. Instead, you've got speakers actually built right onto the awning uh, arms here. Now, previously they were all the way up top on the awning head and that was fine when the awning was open, but when the awning was closed, you couldn't really hear anything very well. You were blowing away the neighbors. So this is a little easier when the awning arms are closed. Now, dead in the middle of that awning, you might see that little black rectangle between that window with the blue two on it and that big white door. That is your outside TV mount. So that bedroom TV mount that we saw, if you put a TV on it, it can quickly float inside or outside however you want it to. Now that, blue, that big blue two that we just mentioned, let's talk about that real quick. Let's talk about RV warranties. There are one year or two year RV warranties. There are not three year RV warranties. There are three year limited structural warranties. Some of them are good. Some of them cover nearly nothing. Largely, it's a feel good warranty. It's something uh, designed around, uh, around aspects of RVs that are not known for failure. However, peace of mind is certainly worth something. I'm not saying it's a worthless joke or anything like that. I like extra assurance as much as the next person, but the fact is, if that's what you're looking for, basically any Jayco product has the most warranty. It covers more things for longer. Now, one of the interesting aspects about these, especially in this category, is they're custom engineered chassis. And it's something that you can't always overtly see. And the other day, somebody watching one of these videos says, why is it every J-Flight coupler? Why does it look different from all the other ones? And it's because it has a different kind of chassis. Um, instead of the A-frame of the RV being tacked under to the bottom of the chassis, which makes the whole RV sit up really high in the air, this is fully integrated. So that it, the, the platform height where the ball hooks up is the same, by the way. But what it means, guys, is this actually has a lower floor, not a taller roof. It's not taller inside. Uh, well, I'm sorry, it's taller inside, it's not taller outside because it has a lower floor. That means a lower center of towing gravity means a lot of good things. And you see they also have that extended diamond plate to help protect it. Now as we move up here, you're going to see all LED tail and marker lights. And who the heck opened this up in the rain and left it there? I'm going to have to choke somebody. Let me close that up. Sorry about that. That's just utter nonsense and stupidity. It wasn't raining a few minutes ago. Maybe somebody needed to check on something. I'm not sure. So, I do like to look at the outside storage though. So with that... Let's look at those compartments. Starting with the one up front, you can see that it is a big full pass-through. Now, the door is larger on the other side. Normally, J-Flights have equally sized doors, but this one with the bed slide, they did have to shrink it. But if you notice, you're not losing anything. You're gaining extra outside storage under the bed as well. Um, over here between the slides on the uh, driver's side of the trailer or the off-door side, however you prefer to call it, We've got our gas, electric, auto ignition, fast recharge water heater, giving us a roughly 17.8 gallons of recharge per hour, 18 for the sake of ease. Black tank outside, uh, or black tank uh, utility flush, of course it's outside for your sewer tank. Um, you know, simple, well actually not simple, but a full hot cold uh, outside shower. But here's another thing I like to point out. You have one drain on this bigger camper. When you get into these big triple sides, a lot of times you'll have separate uh, drains. You might have like a kitchen gray tank all the way back behind or by the tires and then a, uh, a separate black tank uh, up near the front bathroom. Now you see this little storage compartment right here. That's what I call why not storage. Someone's going to look at that and say why did they put that there? It's behind that electric fireplace. It would be what was otherwise wasted space but they don't like wasting space so they put a little pocket here. You'll always find something to do with it so why not have it there? Now the windows we talked about uh, inside all opening for airflow, but you can see they're also all UV tinted. Not all travel trailers uh, do that. So that's another one of those differences. It's a little more money, but it improves your privacy. It also keeps the RV cooler because you're blocking solar radiation. I'm sorry if my camera works not great. It is hard trying to keep the weather off of this camera right now. 
The rear roof ladder is an optional piece of equipment. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna be a rare instance we don't have one of those on a J flight here because um, it really helps highlight their Magnum truss roof system. This has the most heavily constructed uh, roof in the entirety of the travel trailer business, short of some other Jayco, rated for at least 4,500 pounds. It's fantastic. It's it's like 50% more than anything else. It's great. Uh, Speaking of construction, uh, starting up top there, it actually, where it starts, and this is different from most trailers, it has a 3 8 tongue groove plywood roof deck, not an OSB roof deck. So that is another one of those superior materials giving you that superior, uh, you know, warranty and peace of mind thing. Um, below that, we've got our 5-inch extra thick Magnum truss uh, roof system with the extra heavy-duty uh, nail plates holding everything together. Coming down the walls, we've got uh, a full 2-inch thick wall. 16-inch uh, on center wall studs coming down to the floor. Oh, actually, above the slide out, here's another thing to talk about. They uh, they could make the slide a little bit taller, but they would have to sacrifice structure to do it. Um, they have an extremely heavy-duty, like 8-inch thick, 8-inch tall, rather, micro-laminated header beam on this. And what that does, guys, because the slide out takes up so much space, there's you need extra structure above the slide so that the trailer doesn't sag, so it doesn't lose its uh, rigidity. Well, that's exactly what that does. We do not have... It, basically, what that means, guys, is it doesn't matter in year one. It matters in, like, year ten. You're not going to have roof leaks above that... Uh, or uh, seam leaks above that super slide because the wall's no longer the same shape it used to be. It'll hold square. Um, the floor, we have two by three studs running longitudinally down the trailer with insulation and heat ducting between. And a five-inch... Uh, five-eighths, rather, tongue-and-groove plywood floor deck down there. So that's how she's put together. All that stuff is extra above and beyond. Um, there's very few trailers that'll match any of that, and no other trailer that matches all of that. Even little differences like the underbelly enclosure on a J flight is actually C channeled in place so that it can't wiggle loose. Um, one other big important thing I want to talk about is uh, a best in class tire package. And let me get up here. You can see the little Goodyear sticker right there giving you a little bit of a clue what I'm going to talk about. Jayco's all. Even their pop-ups run on Goodyear Endurance Radials. Um, they actually go to a heavier grade tire even on their big luxury fifth wheels and toy haulers. But these things are rated at 80 PSI for up to 87 mile an hour. They're overrated. So that, uh, you know, if you are going faster than you should towing a trailer on the road, this tire is not uh, going to fail you. That's one of those things. The two most common causes of tire failures in the RV industry are driving too fast for what the tire is rated for and uh, under inflation. Now, one more thing, another option that we like to apply to these is the uh, insulation package. The J-Flight insulation package is hands down, bar none, the most comprehensive of its class. It puts it roughly on par with uh, like an Eagle HT fifth wheel in terms of insulation. Starts with the underbelly, it encloses, and force air heats the underbelly, but that's where most campers are gonna stop. This then adds two different layers, two different types of insulation into the underbelly. It has an insulated slide floor and exterior insulation in the roof that wraps down the nose. So whether you're going to hot or cold camp, this thing is built to perform. Now there's a lot of things that we've talked about, and I don't know that any single one of those is the reason to go with a J-Flight, but I know that there are a lot of reasons to go with J-Flights. But there's a lot of reasons to go with a lot of different campers, and that's why we put these videos together. We like to show you where all of them shine through and offer a superior value, and then let you decide which one you'd like to take home. Now you're probably going to have more questions, and we welcome that. You know, we're not done with you by any stretch, guys. We're not a buy it and fly it place, and it doesn't matter where you live, because these things are on wheels and we send them all over the country all the time. Um, so whether it's hitching pieces, parts, trades financing, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery, and everything in between, with the exception of hidden dealer fees that we don't do, Halet RV is the place to go. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping everyone.